tiny worms living near Chernobyl have evolved a remarkable new talent. And the, uh, we have the pictures of the nematodes collected at the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Microscopic worms that live their lives in the highly radioactive environment of the Chernobyl exclusion zone, CEZ, appear to do so completely free of radiation damage. Nematodes collected from the area have shown no sign of damage to their genomes, contrary to what might be expected for organisms living in such a, da a dangerous place. The finding does not suggest that CEZ is safe, the researchers say, but rather the worms are resilient and able to adroitly adapt to conditions that might be inhospitable to other species. This, says a team of biologists led by Sophia Tintori of New York University, could offer some insights into DNA repair mechanisms that could one day be adapted for use in human medicine. Since the expo explosion of the reactor in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant April 1986, the area around it and the nearby town of Pripyat in Ukraine, that's near Kiev, by the way, have been strictly off limits to anybody without government approval, the radioactive materials deposited into the, the environment expose organisms to extremely unsafe levels of iodizing radiation, greatly enhancing the risk of mutation, cancer, and death. It's going to be thousands of years before Chernobyl, is, at, is uh, it, as it is spelt in Ukraine, is safe for human habitation again, thousands of years. Most of us know that and uh, steer clear accordingly, but animals, well, they don't understand and stay away. They just stay away, so they, they roam around freely in there. They go where they want. And the exclusion zone has since become a strange sort of radioactive 2,600 square kilometer, that's a thousand square mile animal sanctuary. Tests of animals that live in the region have shown clear genetic differences from animals that do not live there but there's still a lot we don't know about the effects of the disaster on the local ecosystems. Chernobyl was a tragedy of incomprehensible scale, but we still don't have a great grasp on the effects of the disaster on local populations, Trintori says. Did the sudden environmental shift select for species or even individuals within a species that are naturally more resistant to iodizing radiation? One way to gain insight into the question is to look at nematodes, these little uh, small worms, microscopic roundworms that uh, live in the range of habitats, including the bodies of other organisms. Nematodes can be remarkably hardy. There have been multiple cases of nematodes reawakening after thousands of years frozen in the permafrost. They have simple genomes, they live short lives, which means multiple generations can be studied in a short space of time. This makes some excellent model organis or organisms for studying a range of things, from biological development to DNA repair and toxin response. And this is why Tintori and her colleagues went digging in Chernobyl to find nematodes of the species Orchidius tipalei, which typically lives in the soil. They collected hundreds of nematodes from rotting fruit, leaf litter, and the soil of the CEZ, using Geiger counters to measure ambient radiation and wearing protective suits against radioactive dust. The researchers cultured nearly 300 of their collected worms in a laboratory and selected 15 specimens for genome sequencing. These sequenced genomes were then compared to the sequenced genomes of five specimens from elsewhere in the world, the Philippines, Germany, United States, Mauritius, and Australia. These CEZ worms from Chernobyl were mostly more genetically similar to each other than they were to the other worms with the genetic distance corresponding to the geographic distance for the entire 20 strain sample. But signs of DNA damage from the radiation environment were lacking. The team carefully analyzed the worm's genome and found no evidence of the large scale chromosomal rearrangements expected from a mutagenic environment. They also found no correlation between the mutation rate of the worms and the strength of the ambient radiation at the location each worm hailed from. And finally, they concluded they conducted tests on the descendants on each of the 20 worm strains to determine 
how well the population tolerates DNA damage, although each lineage had a different tolerance level, this too had no correlation with the ambient radiation to which their ancestors were exposed. The team could only conclude that there is no evidence of any genetic impact on the Chernobyl environment on these nematodes. And what they did find could help researchers try to figure out why some humans are more susceptible to cancer than others. And now that we know which strains of these nematodes are more sensitive to more tolerant uh, to, or more tolerant to DNA damage, we can use these traits to study why different individuals are more likely than others to suffer the effects of carcinogens, Tintari says. Thinking about how individuals respond differently to DNA damaging agents in the environment is something that will help us have a clear vision of our own risk factors. The research was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and this is on Science Alert by Michelle Starr. Please leave your comments. And thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.